There's movement in the distance. A deer in the tall grass. Is it a doe or the buck of a lifetime? Few animals increase the pulse rate of a hunter more than the sight of a mature white-tailed buck with a full complement of antlers. Hi, I'm Marty Malin, your traveling sportsman. Today, our wildlife biologist and game management specialist, Larry Wysoon, is joined by outdoor writer and photographer, Tom Fagley. Tom represents the traveling sportsman in the northeastern United States. With them, we'll learn more about quality whitetail deer management as we join them for a hunt on a well-managed ranch in the Texas Hill Country. To some, the state of Texas is known as a huge expanse of rangeland, complete with hills and plains. To others, it is known for its abundant cactus and thorns. But to the hunter, Texas is known as whitetail heaven. Larry has decided to travel approximately 60 miles northwest of San Antonio to Kerr County near Kerrville in the beautiful Texas Hill Country. Tom will be joining him there for a hunt for a mature whitetail buck on a ranch with an extensive game management plan. Thanks to the support and efforts of hunters, biologists, and landowners, Texas supports the largest whitetail deer herds in the world. Most recent estimates place the current population at near 4 million. In recent years, there's been a considerable interest in managing deer herds for quality animals and habitat. Here's what Larry has to say about quality management programs. Game management has been described, at least by Aldo Leopold, as the art of making land produce a sustained crop of wildlife for recreational purposes. Beginning in about the 1960s, especially here in Texas, landowners and sportsmen noting, started noticing a declining quality of white-tailed deer, especially in the southern part of the state. This brought on a whole new scheme of management programs. We saw people become very interested in producing quality type deer. The steps in producing quality deer are to, first of all, is to be sure that there is sufficient food throughout the entire year. We never want those deer to go hungry. We also want those animals to have the opportunity to mature. White-tailed bucks mature at about four and a half years of age. At that point, everything that's not needed for just purely for maintenance can be put into antler development. Any time that we improve the habitat for white-tailed deer, or whether we improve it for bobwhite quail for that matter, anything that's done to improve that habitat increases the diversity of the plants that are there. That diversity of plants also increases not only those game animals, but it also increases all the non-game species, such as the songbirds, even reptiles, all the little creatures such as rats and mice, all these increase and everything benefits from a real good management program. One aspect of a game management plan is enhancing the quality of the herd by removing undesirable animals. That includes harvesting does and inferior bucks. This in turn keeps the balance of the herd in check. The process is known as culling and Larry explains further. In some of the management programs that we're into, we hear a lot of people talking about cull or inferior animals. And in most instances, most deer herds are not far enough along to even get involved into taking cull animals. It can be a very important part of any management program, but it's more important that we learn how to improve the habitat and that we keep those total numbers of animals on that habitat in tune with what that soil, what that area can produce at the worst of times. If we produce food for those animals at the worst of times, that deer herd is going to produce a lot of fawns each year. Fawns in nature are born roughly at a ratio of 50-50. That means that as you go into a management program, you're also going to have to think about not only taking bucks, but taking does. During the past 75 to 100 years, the white-tailed deer has continued to increase his range to cover the greater portion of North America. Today, the whitetail can be found in every state, with the possible exception of an area in and around Utah, Alaska, as well as the Northwest Territories and Labrador of the Canadian provinces. By his very nature, the white-tailed deer is wary and secretive. This is especially true of mature bucks. 
About the only time the older bucks are seen is in the fall during the breeding season commonly referred to as the rut. Bucks are most active during that time of the year. The rest of the year they may be almost impossible to find, venturing forth only on occasions in search of food or water. The size of a buck's antlers are determined by primarily three factors, age, genetics, and nutrition. Bucks mature at four years of age. Up to that time, they are trying to develop body and antlers. After four years of age, any nutrients not required for maintenance can be channeled to antler development. Genetics determines the size and shape of the antlers, generally including the number of points, spread, and mass. Proper nutrition is a key ingredient in producing big body and large rack bucks. All too often, nutrition is the limiting factor in bucks developing their best antlers. Nutrients such as protein, fats, carbohydrates, minerals, and vitamins on a daily basis are required for optimum antler development. The quality of the habitat will have a great influence on the overall health and well-being of all wildlife both game and non-game. Hunting mature whitetail bucks is challenging. By the time a buck reaches maturity, he has become intimately knowledgeable of the habitat. The hunter, interested in taking a mature whitetail buck, must remain alert at all times. He must be patient and willing to pass up younger bucks. He must be ready to seize an opportunity. Quite often, mature bucks just seem to appear when and where you least expect them. Throughout our hunting lives, each of us goes through many stages. The shooting stage, the limiting out stage, the method stage, the trophy stage, and the last of which is the sportsman stage. To a true sportsman, the success or failure of any hunt is not measured in game taken, but in the overall outdoor experience. When we return, we'll join Larry and Tom as they hunt for a mature whitetail buck in a rather unusual fashion. Later on, we'll dig into the sportsman's travel bag, learn a secret recipe for preparing venison and some other interesting facts. Tom left his home state of Pennsylvania with the full intent of taking a buck with his favorite muzzle loader. I've had the chance to hunt with muzzle loading rifles in many states, but never in Texas. So I figured my hunt with Larry was the perfect time to try out my new MK85 muzzle loader. This is a modern muzzle loader, one that can shoot the patched round balls with which most muzzle loader hunters are familiar, or the newer pistol bullets, along with his green Sabo that keeps it tight in the barrel. Like any muzzle loaders, it takes a lot of shooting. You've got to make sure the gun is on, develop the right load, for it to be the most effective. And that's just what I plan to do the morning of the hunt. And then Larry came along with his handgun. It's a 309 JDJ, and I was intrigued by it when I saw Larry shoot it. So I figured I'd take a couple shots myself. Believe me, I was impressed, especially when the first shot at 100 yards just missed the bullseye. The second one was even better. And as I'd never taken a deer with a handgun before, I figured this would be the perfect time. And that afternoon, Larry and I headed afield to a place where we'd found some fresh scrapes that very morning in hopes of finding that often elusive big one. Having found a fresh scrape that morning, the two set up nearby for the evening hunt in an area where an open grassy field adjoined some dense thickets. They allowed a period of time for the sounds of the disturbance of moving into the area to be stilled and forgotten. 
Larry then started a rattling sequence to imitate the sounds of two mature bucks sparring. As Larry rattled, a young buck appeared. Soon, several deer wandered into the grassy field. They knew that something was not quite right, so they were still a bit skittish. After a while, they settled into graze. some other bucks started coming in, including a magnificent 15-pointer who will be preserved as he is still in his breeding prime. Then he appeared, a beautiful mature 10 point. Tom knew immediately that this was the deer he had come so far to take. There's a buck coming up on the left. Right back of that toe. You just see it barely through the grass. Unknown to Larry, who was wondering why Tom had not shot, Tom could not see the buck clearly because of the tall grass between himself and the deer. To maintain the buck's interest, Larry started grunting. down. Ready, dude. A hill country buck. Congratulations, my friend. <laughs> Good calling. Those of us who enjoy the sport of hunting know that all hunts do not end this successfully. This hunt will be remembered long after the venison is gone and the expense of the hunt is forgotten. Going on a whitetail deer hunt, whether it's in the Texas Hill Country or one of the other states, there's several things that you'll want to take with you. One, of course, is a real good camo, a camo that blends well with the situation of where you're hunting, so it blends into the background. You also want to take possibly another type of camo in case you're hunting in a different situation. I like to take with me some light material and I like to take some heavy material, including some coats possibly, so that I can use a layered effect in case it's cold in the morning and then warms up during the middle of the day. I enjoy hunting handguns. In this case, I try to hunt with a handgun that's a single shot. It works extremely well. It's accurate up to about 300 yards. This is a 309 JDJ. I prefer to use either a four fire scope or 
possibly even a variable, some of the two to seven variables that are on the market today. If you shoot a handgun, you'll also want to use a good shooting glove, one that has a little bit of padding to accept some of the recall, and this will help you get a much better grip to get a good shot on an animal. Occasionally when I'm hunting, I also find myself hunting in a situation where there's snow or adverse weather conditions, so I want to carry with me a small kit that will allow me to clean that handgun or rifle, whatever I'm shooting. You'll also need a good pair of binox. I prefer to use a 10 power pair because it gives me just that option if I have to look a long way off that I can see just a little bit better. And quite often, even when I'm hunting in very tight situations, a good pair of binoculars will give you that edge and help you find that one little antler that's sticking out in a maze of brush, help you pick out an individual animal. For years, people have been grunting, but it's only recently that the grunt calls come out. These work extremely well, especially if you've got an animal in close or trying to stop one or trying to entice one out of the brush. Of course, to me, you can't go on a whitetail hunt without taking a set of rattling horns along. To me, there's nothing more fun than rattling up a big old whitetail buck. These particular antlers are a synthetic antler. They're bright orange that you can be seen or they can be seen. They work extremely well in the form of a mule deer shape because these back tines have a tendency to make it sound a little bit more like two actual bucks fighting. If you take those products with you whenever you go on a whitetail hunt, you're gonna have a successful hunt. Did you know there are over 15 million whitetail deer in North America? Of these, about four million live in the state of Texas. During the 1987-88 hunting season, approximately 500,000 whitetail deer were taken in Texas by hunters. Biologists tend to agree 20% of the overall deer herd can be harvested annually by hunting without having any detrimental effect on the overall whitetail deer herd. Each year across North America, more whitetail deer are lost due to starvation and automobile accidents than the total numbers taken by hunting. One of the great pleasures of a successful whitetail hunt is to enjoy the venison. Throughout the last several years, it's been my pleasure to have eaten in some of the finest hunting camps in North America, and I thought I'd had some really good food. But that was until I ran into Mel Carver down in New Orleans. Mel taught us how to cook Creole venison, the finest food I've ever eaten. Larry, these tenders have been pounded out, marinated in olive oil, garlic, and our lemon juice. Mm -hmm. I've added some bay leaf just to give it that traditional Creole flavor. Mm -hmm. I've marinated them for about two and a half hours. If you'd be real kind, I want to show you, you the grill. You can see I've taken the grill. It's been preheated. It's pretty hot. I've thrown some olive oil out. I've got you a little Cajun oh, stick right. of dynamite there. right there. <laughs> and again, the grill is real hot. I've laid a heavy duty aluminum foil on it and I've taken a good quality olive oil. It's real important that you use a good quality olive oil so you don't get a bitter taste. Mm -hmm. Step back a little bit and I'm gonna throw on Ooh. our meat. You can see how it's starting to cook already. It doesn't take long. That doesn't smell good, does it? Well, I'll tell you what, I don't think it can smell any better. Well, it is. It's, it's going to smell a lot better. We're going to throw the garlic, the whole, marin the whole marinade on it. Uh-huh. And we're going to add some vegetables to this. The vegetables we're going to add, you can see I'm putting some more on there. Mm -hmm. The vegetables I'm going to add, first thing we're going to add are some green and red pepper. Oh, that's going to be pretty. It's going to be beautiful. Next thing we're going to add are some Bermuda onions. Uh -huh. Now that does smell good. Next thing we're going to add going to be about three pounds of mushrooms. Oh my goodness. 
We'll let that one for the dog. Okay. <laughs> We're going to add at this time just a little Meunier sauce. I know that stuff's good. Break that onion up. Not only does that smell good, that looks pretty right there. I'm glad. Oh, wow, that smells good. I'm going to flip the meat over now uh -huh. so that it doesn't get too tough on us. You can see it's falling apart. This it is, is beautiful it? venison. Ooh, that looks good enough to eat right there. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to put some Meunier sauce on it. All right. And you can see, this is made for us. How'd you like those tomatoes? I love those tomatoes, but I can't wait to try the rest of that. Get you some more onions. Shred it in. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, please send a self-addressed envelope to the Traveling Sportsman, 6620 Riverside Drive, Suite 212, Metairie, Louisiana, 70003. Please be sure to specify the recipe you wish to receive. The Traveling Sportsman recommends the following videos for a more in-depth look at whitetail hunting. Whitetails Judging Trophies, Smith Taylor Productions. In Search of Monster Whitetail, Gordon Eastman Productions. Formula for Success, Deer Hunting, 3M Leisure Time Productions. If you have trouble finding the videos in your area, call the Traveling Sportsman's hotline, one 800 Five, four, tapes. <laughs>